In today's forecast, we have a chance of severe weather across the central plains. Where will we see snow? And the latest on Tropical Storm Sarah, next at the Weather Farm. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Weather Farm. We have a lot of information to talk about today. We have the threat of severe weather for the central plains on Monday. Where will we see snow and colder temperatures as we go into next week? and the latest on the tropics with Tropical Storm Sarah. So let's dive right into this forecast. On our Friday, we see generally quiet conditions from the Rocky Mountains all the way to the East Coast. We see a little bit of snow across parts of California and Nevada. This is leftover remnants from the atmospheric rivers that impacted uh, Washington and Oregon on our Thursday. Those have moved a little further inland. So higher elevation snows are likely. And we have an area of disturbed weather off the coast of North Carolina that we're monitoring. It's continuing to move offshore. As we move into our Saturday, that area of snowfall will move out of Nevada into Idaho, into areas near Yellowstone National Park in Montana. We will see, again, light accumulations, generally two to four inches. We see, generally, for the eastern two-thirds of the nation, under the area of high pressure. So we see comfortable temperatures, quiet conditions, no real precipitation to speak of. We do see an area of disturbed weather across parts of northern Maine and into Quebec. This is due to uh, a low that is retrograding out of the Canadian Maritimes onshore. Um, this isn't typical, but we do see it from time to time. It will bring light snow and mixed precipitation to those regions. But if we look to our north and west, that is the first of two troughs that are going to come onshore uh, over the next few days that are going to impact our weather. So the thing I do want to talk about here with this particular map is we talked about a couple things happening in our videos on Monday and Wednesday. We talked about a Greenland blocking high. We talked about uh, the persistent troughs. I want to, you to pay attention to how things have changed since we talked last time. If you need to go back and watch those videos, we have them linked up above. So you can click on them, compare and see how the things have progressed over this week. As new, more, as new data comes in each and every day. So let's take a look at our jet stream. This is the jet stream in the trough that's going to come on shore on our Friday. Again, it's going to bring an area of unsettled weather across Nevada, moving into Idaho and Wyoming, and eventually on Montana on our Saturday. But it is an extension of the trough that extends all the way down to the Baja. This is where we're going to see an area of low pressure form on our Sunday as it moves across Mexico. And it's going, to bring, it's going to impact weather in Texas. But right behind it is a secondary trough that is forming. This one is negatively tilted already. So it's um, going to be the one that's going to bring the biggest change. So as that first system moves out, we see that second one beginning to dive with this negative tilt of the trough. Um, it's going to then impact parts of Kansas into Oklahoma, moving into Missouri for our Wednesday, and eventually moving into the Great Lakes area on our Thursday and Friday. And it's going to stall out a little bit here on our Thursday and Friday. It's going to get kind of held up by the high pressure to the north and east, but eventually it moves out for next weekend as an area of ridging builds again across the central plains. So let's look at that setup on our Monday. As we talked about, we have an area of low pressure that's going to dig in and form in Mexico on Sunday, and it's going to move into Texas on our Monday. This is at 6Z, or about 1 a.m. Uh, Eastern Time, midnight Central Time, on our Monday morning. We see this area of blue across most of Texas from uh, the coastline up through Dallas up into the panhandle of Texas. This is an area of rich moisture transport. So we're having a lot of moisture transported out of the Gulf into Texas, into Oklahoma, and even into Arkansas early on Monday morning. And then when we look at the uh, winds, we see a lower level jet, winds in excess of 50 knots here in this red area, again extending all the way basically down from Brownsville all the way up through Dallas into Oklahoma. This is an area of strong winds, so that warmer air is going to be transported, that moisture is going to be able to tra be transported a great distance because of these strong winds at 850 millibars. And 850 millibars is an area about 3,000 miles up in the atmosphere, or 3,000 feet, not miles, 3,000 feet up in the atmosphere. It's one we kind of look at for the development of storms because at that level, 
we don't have a lot of obstructions. We don't have a lot of buildings that high in the sky, things that can impact uh, weather from developing. So we looked there. We saw the rich moisture. We saw a lot of wind. And those two things would be enough to think we might have some convective or severe uh, thunderstorms happening in this area on our Monday. But the third part that's missing is the colder weather. So here's the 500 millibar uh, temperatures. Again, this is about three to six uh, kilometers up in the atmosphere. Um, so what we see is that this coldest area here, this blue that's across parts of southwestern New Mexico, southeastern Arizona, and northern Mexico, this temperatures here at 500 millibars are roughly 25 degrees Celsius below zero, so about minus 10 Fahrenheit. Out ahead of it, where we saw the rich moisture and the strong winds across Texas and Oklahoma, temperatures are about minus 10, or about 14 degrees Fahrenheit. So if this cold air was aligned where the strongest winds and the moisture was, yes, we would say we have the three ingredients necessary for uh, convection to occur. And, and we'd be concerned about uh, hail and damaging winds and a possibility of tornadoes. But the fact that these aren't completely aligned um, gives us some reason that we might just see heavy rain um, out of the system on Monday. However, we will continue to monitor this because if this just shifts even a little bit further east or the two areas kind of, the three areas start to align with each other, we'll, we'll keep you updated with that. On our Monday and Wednesday videos, we were thinking we were going to have a strong area of abnormally high 500 millibar heights across Greenland. What we're now seeing is that that's not going to happen exactly as we thought it would. What you're seeing here with these whites that are over Baffin Island in places like Clyde River in Nunavut Territory, that is where the highest height anomalies are going to be found, not over Greenland. And because this is shifted about 200 miles to the west, it's not going to allow the entire Canadian uh, northern uh, territories, provinces, and Alaska to have that blocking pattern in, in place, that Greenland blocking high that we talked about on Monday and Wednesday. Again, if you need to go back and watch those videos, we've linked them up above. But because this is not going to set up exactly the way we thought it was, yes, we are going to get a, a part of the cold air that's going to dive south. Here's that Monday storm. Here's the second trough behind it. But because we don't have that blocking pattern across Alaska, across Yukon, across the Northwest Territories, it's, not, it's going to allow the ridging and, and things to continue to build like we've seen the last several weeks. So we will get a shot of colder weather come Wednesday. It's going to come across the plains and make its way into the Ohio Valley. But that ridging is going to break down. It's not going to hold because yet another uh, area of cold is going to impact Alaska as ridging builds across the west and then moves across the plains as we get into next weekend. So this is a change from what we were thinking, and it does have an impact on the forecast that we're going to talk about here coming up next. We were thinking that by the middle of next week, we would see a large area of 25, 30 degrees below normal. We could possibly see several record lows being broken across the central plains, making their way into the upper Midwest. We don't think that's going to happen now because that Greenland blocking high pattern that we thought was going to set up is actually going to set up just a couple hundred miles to the west, that's going to change our impact. Another thing that's going to change our impact is because everything is shifted a little bit west, we're not going to have that snow across Alberta into Saskatchewan, that snowpack. So even though the cold air lobes are going to come out of Alaska down uh, into the lower 48, they're going to modify because they're not going to have that deep snowpack across those provinces to keep the cold air cold. This is Monday. There's that area of low pressure into Texas, bringing heavy rain and a few isolated storms. It lifts into Kansas, into Nebraska, into Iowa, into, into Minnesota. And we have that secondary trough starting to form and dig its way across here, across the, the Rockies. And we see this area make it a low pressure here, bringing snow to the Dakotas and to parts of Minnesota. But back here, we see another area of low pressure forming in the Tennessee Valley, making its way up into Ohio. It kind of retrogrades a little bit and stays in the Ohio Valley for our Thursday into our Friday. 
And this is the change that has happened. Where we thought earlier in the week, the heavier snow, the more concentrated parts of this storm would be concentrated across the Dakotas into Nebraska, Iowa, and Minnesota. Late, the last two or three model runs have shifted that energy with just rain here because the cold air, those 540 lines, can't catch up to the moisture in time. So there's not much interaction with the moisture. Most of it will fall as rain. But now we see a secondary low forming in Tennessee, moving its way up into Kentucky. And this is where the energy and the main focus of the storm is going to be. But first, let's look at the precipitation impacts from, our, from the first round of storms. So our Monday, we see the heaviest rains, two to four inches across Texas into Oklahoma and to eastern Kansas. By our Wednesday, more heavier rains of one to two inches. They spread up into Minnesota, into Iowa, even parts of northwestern Wisconsin. It is in our Wednesday that we see another area of heavy rain developing here from um, Missis or Alabama into Tennessee through Nashville, through Lexington, Kentucky, up into southeastern Ohio. Areas that have been abnormally dry to extremely dry over the last several, week, several weeks are going to get beneficial rains. And why is this happening? Well, as we talked about with the jet stream, we have a jet stream that's going to dig very deep across uh, parts of Missouri. It's going to be sent, the low is going to be centered somewhere around central Missouri, and this low is going to dig deep into Arkansas. In these areas, the winds in the jet stream, the, the, the more reds and oranges and even the yellows, the faster and faster winds that we have. So here we see some winds, 150 knots. But across Tennessee and Kentucky, we also see winds, 150, 175 knots. Uh, so these are areas of fast moving winds way up in the atmosphere. This is 300 millibar heights. So what happens and why we think that the, main, the first low that is at this point around the arrowhead of Minnesota or even into um, Ontario, we think what's going to happen is that this is going to lose its main focus because as air parcels race through the jet stream, they will be accelerating as they enter into the, the trough. And they do this to maintain their equilibrium because naturally the air parcels want to be pulled uh, by the Coriolis effect. And so we have to accelerate them so they can maintain balance through the jet stream as they get to the, 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 the pit of the trough. So as they do that, but then they exit the pit of the trough, but then they have to slow down because as fast as they go through, you think of going down a real steep slide. You're going fast, and then you fly out of the slide. If you remember as a kid, I always loved to do that slide, seeing how far I could jump off of the slide as I you know, went down it. But we have air parcels here that are digging down and then going fast out of it. So they have to decelerate as they exit the trough because if they didn't, they would just fly off in many different directions. And so this area, this left exit region of a jet streak is where we see the greatest divergence, divergence of air parcels in the atmosphere. So we see divergence happening here, and this is where we see the secondary low wanting to form in the left exit region of a jet streak. Additionally, it was here as the storm was forming. The storm is maturing as it, gets, as it moves east. But now we see that secondary low that's here as opposed to up in the arrowhead. And this is now going to be the focus as we move into our Thursday into our Friday. So let's take a look closely at the Great Lakes region. Here's the rain that's on Monday and Tuesday. It's going to move to the north and east. But as we move Tuesday, and our Wednesday is going to be pretty quiet weather across most of this area. But as we move into our Wednesday, we're going to start to see this low starting to form in Tennessee, make its way up into Kentucky and the southern Ohio. And then it's going to kind of retrograde back. Um, and as the cold air gets in, the 540 line, we're going to see some mixing here. This particular model wants to show mixing across Indiana and Ohio on our Thursday into Friday. A lot of that to still be determined how quickly that cold air does get into place. Because if you remember, these lines, these red lines, these are uh, height contours. So they tell us if the line is red, that's temperatures above 32 degrees. The 540 line is temperatures generally below 32 degrees. And so we see those as the snow enters Minnesota, these blue lines making their way from west to east. 
and they kind of marry up with this low, how quickly the cold air gets here with the moisture, how long that all sticks around, will determine a lot on what kind of precipitation we see here in the Great Lakes region. So again, this is something we're going to be watching over the next several days. And the other thing that we are watching is Tropical Storm Sarah. It is down uh, off the coast of Honduras. Winds are about 40 knots. It is moving generally in a westerly direction. It will make its way uh, towards Guatemala and then the Yucatan Peninsula over the next 72 hours. In fact, this, the, the spaghetti model takes it onshore by our Monday, crossing the Yucatan Peninsula and exiting back into the Gulf of Mexico early on Tuesday. And then as that trough digs in from the, from the north and east, it's going to help steer whatever remnants of Sarah are in the Gulf. Probably just a lot of unsettled weather as it approaches Florida and makes it away across Florida about a week from now. But we do see some models keep it down south of Florida or just into the Keys. Some do bring it further north into parts of Alabama and Georgia. A lot to watch over the next several days. Model guidance also kind of supports this idea of not really a major storm that we thought might be happening. Because here we are this morning, winds generally 30 to 40 knots. As it crosses and er, goes on shore near Guatemala, it's maybe a minimal tropical storm at best here at 72 hours. As it exits back into the Gulf, some models have it, I mean, very weak winds, maybe 15 knots up to a minimal tropical storm. Not many models have it much higher. And then as it makes its way uh, in the open waters of the Gulf and gets caught up with that trough that's digging uh, south and east, makes its way toward Florida, there might be some strengthening. But again, most models want to keep it just below tropical storm criteria or just above. Stuff that definitely we'll be watching here at the weather farm over the next several days. But as we approach Thanksgiving, there on the, the 28th, we see that most of the country will be have a below normal temperatures for that week leading up to it, and we'll also have below normal precipitation. We hope you've enjoyed your time here at the Weather Farm. We hope you'll check back with us over the weekend. Check our Facebook page, and if you like what you saw, click that subscribe button. Click that bell and be notified of when we go live, when we have new information, because this system is rapidly changing. You can just tell from what happened Wednesday to today how much things have changed. Have a great weekend. We'll see you soon.